Traders, how are you? Marcello, founder of the Day Trading Academy. Today we're doing the recap of what happened in the markets last week. Overall this week, the overarching premise that affected most of the markets is the coronavirus from China. And now obviously spreading very rapidly. On Monday we had a nosedive in the US stocks. The S&P fell 1.3%, the Nasdaq fell 1.7%, the Dow was down 430 points or about 1.48%. Tuesday the US micro, the markets were higher after earnings reports from Apple as well as 104 of the US companies reports the results so far. They about 68.3% topped expectations. Thursday closed higher despite the WHO, the World Health Organization, declaring the coronavirus a global emergency. And Friday, the market took another dump, just went straight down with the Dow falling 600 points with more concerns about the coronavirus. Thursday and Friday, it escalated quite a bit. We've had over a thousand, as of today, I just looked it up, today's Sunday, Sunday? I can't remember what day it is, anyway. Recently, it's above 11,000 confirmed cases so far. We've had about 213 people dead in mainland China, dozens more infected worldwide. I just saw on the news as well that we had another a brand new case in New York. And also the military in the U.S. is starting to create a center to be able to uh, send the people who potentially have the coronavirus to be able to keep them under, under wraps in the meantime while all this passes. Now the Chinese, there's a lot of analysts that are saying now that the coronavirus is going to affect quite a bit the Chinese economy. The infections have already surpassed the 2002-2003 SARS epidemic total. Nations around the world are also starting to remove their diplomatic staff and also private citizens from Chinese areas hit by the actual virus. Overseas market news, same as the U.S., definitely affected by the coronavirus. Most markets were negative. On Friday, it headed for the biggest weekly loss since August. On Friday, with oil and industrialized metals markets showing quite a bit of movement in regards to the, the concern about what's going on because even Corona, the Corona beer, if you, if you look Corona on Google, a lot of people think that the coronavirus is actually with the Corona beer from Mexico, which I think is pretty funny. Not for them, obviously, because they're not making enough money. Their sales are down, but anyway. So since this has started, there's been $1 trillion of global equity valuation that has been gone. One trillion, imagine that, it's quite a bit. European markets are mostly lower. Italy is down 12.38%. Latin American markets are mostly lower. The biggest loser there is the Bovespa in Brazil, the 4.05% negative. Africa and Middle Eastern markets, Nigeria, biggest economy in Africa, biggest population in Africa as well, was down 2.72%. The winners uh, weren't that high there in the region. And in Asia and Australian markets, the Hong Kong markets, the HSCEI was down 6.22%, the biggest loser. And for all my traders in the Philippines, that market went down 5.86% as they had a bit of a scare and the Philippine government actually made a decision to ship out a lot of Chinese from the country. In Bitcoin and other cryptocurrency news, the Bitcoin is far higher this week. 11.83% at about 9,345. There's already whispers that it's going to get to 50,000 again this year. Once once it starts to go up, they they got to get they got to get ahead of themselves. So uh, it's not going to get to 50,000 this year either, guys. Just just so you know. In financial and banking news, the Fed's bond portfolio is growing once again uh, through the not quantitative easing, otherwise known as QE4. In the heyday in the early 2010s it was the, the, when we started to see this, especially quite a bit of this from the government, which is we're now starting to get back to those levels. Prices for stocks and other assets are starting to rise quite a bit, and this is going to be potentially another major problem. And the Fed is now buying in the not QE, the not QE, $60 billion of treasury bills a month last fall. 
Fed policy meeting on Wednesday left the interest rates on hold from 1.5 to 1.75% range. Commodities have taken a big nosedive, at least oil. Precious metals are also affected, but in the other direction, inversely. On Monday, oil went down to another three-month low as China announced a sharper increase in the number of people infected. Oil has now fallen 10% since the beginning of the crisis and 15% since the beginning of the year. It's only been a month, guys, right? We're in February now. In crude oil, it's now at eight-week low. U.S. crude went down to 5.73% this week at 51.42. International Brent went down 4.71% at 58.08. And facing economic, economic collapse and sanctions... Venezuela, the socialist paradise, is now returning to capitalism. They have decided to, they propose to give the majority of the shares and actual control of its oil industry to the big international firms, reversing decades of a state monopoly. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I thought this socialist paradise was going to be amazing. How, how nice is that? They're going back to capitalism. Anyway, I just thought that was hilarious. So anyway, coronavirus, precious metals, uh, there a lot of investors are going back as a, as a hedge. Gold is at a six year high now. Silver has increased to over $18. Remember I told you guys about the positions that I'm working on in relation to the miners. Remember it's not investment advice. This is for educational purposes only. You guys are responsible for what you guys do with your money. Just wanna throw that out there since the regulators like us to sprinkle that on the videos. Other than that, We've had a supply squeeze in Palladium as well. It's up 18% this month. It's the biggest monthly percentage gain since November 2016. And precious metals for the week, gold is up 1.08% to 1589 and silver is down 0.49% to $18.11. Political news, Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu formally indicted in court on Tuesday. Trump now is to touting middle class tax cuts, business deregulation, or excuse me, he's touting the tax cuts that he already made, not the middle ones. He, he announced that he was going to come out with actual new middle class tax cuts. So he's uh, touting the tax cuts, business deregulation, and economic gains during his presidency, which is one of the reasons why he most likely will be reelected in November. Opposition Democrats are seeking to challenge him, and they're saying that the actual gains that have happened in the economy mostly benefit the rich, leaving behind the working class. And they have a, a, a lot of proposals, which are a, a sweeping pledge of universal health care, bold action on climate change, and comparatively modest taxes, modest tax breaks for the poor. The European Parliament on Wednesday gave its final approval for the UK's deal to leave the bloc. They're now going to have an 11th month transition outside of the European Union. That is a major setback for further integration of the European Union. And in regards to the impeachment for Trump, the Alaskan Republican Senator Lisa Murkowski is going to vote against new witnesses. That gives the Republican Party 51 votes to be able to go ahead and wrap up the impeachment. And he is expected to be acquitted this Wednesday. In a major political blow, that obviously is not good for the Democrat Party because they wanted to try to remove him from office. Now, remember, I, I, when I, whenever I do these videos, I try to not get political. I'm always just going to give you guys the facts. I want you to be able to learn you know, how to connect things, what they mean, what happened. For those of you guys that want to be able, you, know, you don't have time to be, keep up on the news, especially if you're trying to learn about these things. But one of the things that you should know, it doesn't matter what side you're on, the, the House of Representatives, the other part of Congress, is what is supposed to do the investigations, right? And then submit it to the Senate. Well, in the, in, in the House of the, the, the Representatives, which is currently controlled by the Democrats, they actually allowed 19 witnesses, if I'm not mistaken, for the, when they were doing the investigations and didn't allow the Republicans to have one witness. So, um, you know, even though they're saying they should have more witnesses in the Senate, you know, the, the, what the Republicans are saying is that you had your chance, right? Because they did that when they were trying to do the investigation and they obviously want to have more, et cetera, et cetera. So that's kind of the, the blowback and the back and forth that are happening between the two parties. In economic news, the coronavirus is having a net strong negative effect on the Chinese economy. On the first day of lunar year, there's been a 41.6% decline on civil air travel. 41.5% redu redu reduction in rail travel and 25% reduction in road transport. 
Now, uh, some analysts are expecting that the pace of growth is going to fall before 4%. It's probably going to be most likely around 3% or so, in my opinion. U.S. economy maintained its moderate pace of growth in the quarter four. In 2018, the economy in the United States grew by 2.9%. The GDP is now at 2.3% for 2019, which is missing the Trump's administration goal of 3%. So this is the slowest annual growth in three years. And the expectation now is that we're going to have not necessarily slow, more slow down, but it's not going to be growing as well as it was in the past due to a slump in business investment and also damaging trade tensions. Now that's what affected most of all the, the, the situations in 2019. And some people were worried not about the coronavirus and everything else now moving into this year. The domestic economy is also as expected that they're expecting for slower growth, as I just mentioned to you guys before. U.S. consumer spending rose steadily in December. Remember, when we talk about the economy and what can move it, the, the reason why we have the kind of environment that we have right now is because if the Fed prints money and that makes the stock market go up, people feel rich, they see their money and their retirement accounts going up, so they spend more money. If people spend more money, that moves the economy, as in the U.S., it's nearing about 70% of consumer spending. That's developed nations. We're talking Australia, Canada, the United States, Europe. In developing economies, you know, Brazil, China, Colombia, for example, they have most of their wealth in real estate, so it doesn't work the same. But that's why, if you guys are wondering what's kind of happening or why we're kind of having the situation where the governments are trying to inject liquidity into the economy, that's why. That's the easiest way to get movement going, even though every dollar that they're injecting is literally debt, and every dollar of debt that they do take on to invest in the economy isn't as effective as it was before. In trade news, the U.S. is hoping to complete a trade pact with the U.K. this year as the Brexit finally took place. Annual trades in goods and services between the U.K. and the U.S. is more than $230 billion. And on an individual basis, the United States is actually the biggest trading partner for the U.K. Now, a lot of the individual countries are in the European Union. So the European Union as a whole altogether is actually the biggest trading partner. But the U.S. is definitely an important trading partner for the the UK market. Roughly 20% of British exports each year go to the US from the UK. And it's, it, as I mentioned, it's the biggest market individually, the United States, biggest market outside of the EU as well. President Trump has signed the new NAFTA deal on Wednesday in an outdoor uh, ceremony in the White House. The new one called the USMCA is going to replace NAFTA, which places tougher rules on labor and automotive content and leaves 1.2 trillion in annual U.S., Mexico, Canada trade flows largely unchanged. And Canada is yet to ratify the new pact. In technology, the electric vehicle startup Rivian, which is backed by Amazon and Ford, is going to introduce the pickup truck and SUV scheduled to be ready in 2020. The R1T pickup is supposedly supposed to have 300 miles of range. It's listed at $69,000 and the R1S SUV has a similar range and it's going to be priced at $72,000 if you guys are in the market for a nice electric SUV. On Wednesday, SpaceX launched its fourth internet beaming satellites on Wednesday. They, it's fourth round, I should say, fourth launch. They launched 60 small satellites that are going to be fired into orbit from their SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. The firm is making an unprecedented push toward building the broadband internet business from space, deploying hundreds of satellites in just a year. In investment news, Poland is set to buy 32 state-of-the-art fifth-generation F-35 fighters for $4.6 billion as they are trying to counter the Russian aggression from one side of their border. And Nigeria claims that it had no warning that the U.S. has been added, that the U.S. is going to potentially add them to the U.S. travel ban list. Uh, the, in, the information minister, Lai Mohammed, stated on Monday, adding such a move would definitely affect the wrong, would affect the country because it's, it's going to send the wrong message to foreign investors. German auto supplier Robert Bosch is saying that the global automotive production may have well peaked already. He's coping with a 44% drop in the full year operating profit of his business amid the downturn in the production of vehicles worldwide. He's announcing job cuts and he's going to review the business and he's also uh, 
he's not saying, but the, the global production of cars in the world, in the United States and the world, as a matter of fact, is going to expect to drop. But he's expecting, a lot of people are expecting it to fall by 2.6% for the third consecutive down year to just 89 million vehicles. In international events, adding downward spiral to the global markets this week in Iraq on Sunday, there's been a report that five Katyusha rockets were fired in the fortified green zone in Baghdad, one directly hitting the U.S. Embassy. Heart goes out to all those that are working there. They, they did hit directly in the compound, which wounded three people, and now the security situation there remains precarious. And over two years after he first proposed a plan to revive the long-stalled Israeli and Palestinian peace process. Trump releases details on what he believes should be the peace process for both sides. But now, unfortunately, it's a lot of mistrust on both sides, and the U.S. is no longer considered a natural power broker. And the unusual facts this week, rum distiller, rum distiller in Venezuela called Ron Santa Teresa is going to have their first public share offering in 11 years, citing optimism that the socialist ruled nation will see a economic transition similar to that to China or the Soviet Union. But remember that in socialist nations, they're not supposed to sell shares. That's a capitalist system. So, hmm, wonder if that system that they have isn't working anymore. France has one of the earliest retirement ages in industrialized nations. Its pensioners enjoy the third highest income level in all of the EU based on purchasing power behind Luxembourg and Austria. Macron, which is a current president, the government is saying that it, the pension system is underfunded and need of reform. And that is why they've been having these protests, the yellow vest protests, if you guys saw them in the news. And he's been dealing with that opposition, the demonstrations from them. On Tuesday, a powerful 7.7 .7 magnitude earthquake struck the Caribbean, prompting a brief tsunami warning and office evacuations as far away as Miami. The quake hit in between Jamaica, the Cayman Islands, and Cuba, and buildings shook and tremors were felt across the Caribbean, but no casualties were reported. German cabinet backs plan to exit the coal as, a as an energy source in 2038 with an end in nuclear power by 2022, the government has already accelerated a shift towards renewable energy sources as part of the efforts by Chancellor Merkel's ruling to try to protect the climate and restore green credentials. Airlines based in North America, Europe and Asia have started canceling flights to China. Authorities might seek uh, trying to seek a, a to contain the spread of the actual virus. Some airlines are even offering refunds to customers and some are, are limiting, they slashed their trips to China, others have stopped altogether. The European Commission is proposing a plan to create an EU, a single EU market for data aimed at challenging the dominance of the EU firms, excuse me, challenging the dominance of US firms. The top five firms, Facebook, Google, Amazon, Netflix, and Microsoft, are they're literally worth uh, the, the capitalization okay, let's try this again rewind so these five firms together their capitalization is actually worth more than the top euro the europe's top 40 firms and in the s p 500 we have about a uh, full third that are tech companies, whereas the stocks in Europe, the stocks Europe 600, that stock exchange, there's only about 6%, which is worth of tech. Now, they want this to be able to create, uh, in European fashion, more rules to cover cross-border data to use and data interoperability. And they want to be able to have standards relating to manufacturing, climate change, healthcare, financial services, and energy. Obviously, Europe, they don't have enough rules, so they have to add more. In Egypt, the population in Egypt is going to exceed 100 million next month, with six people in 10 under 29 years old. Many Arab and African countries now are starting to have uh, struggling with rising populations. Europe has 97% of its people living literally in just 80% of its territory along the Nile. Creating new space for housing, schools, hospitals, and enough jobs is a challenge. And Egypt's population growth is about 2.5 million people a year. There's about 1,400 people packed into every square kilometer. Interesting as well. That's the news for this week, guys. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Hashtag Ask Marcello. And also, don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you next week.